Hello, I'm Kayser and welcome to Moose Reads. Before I get started, I want to say that the opinions that I give here are my own opinions. They are extremely subjective. If I dislike a book, it is not a reflection on the author and it is not a reflection on people who do like it. Different people have different tastes and that's okay. Today I will be reviewing Coco Pelli's Flute by Will Hobbs. It is a fantasy. The description says, Tep Jones has always felt the magic of Picture House, an Anasazi cliff dwelling near the seed farm where he lives with his parents, but he could never have imagined what would happen to him on the night of a lunar eclipse when he finds a bone flute left behind by grave robbers. Tep falls under the spell of a powerful ancient magic that traps him at night in the body of an animal. Only by unraveling the mysteries of Picture House can Tep save himself and his desperately ill mother. Does the enigmatic old Indian who calls himself Cricket hold the key to unlocking the secrets of the past? And can Tep find the answers in time? This is another book I'm not going to rate. Mostly because this is, once again, not for me. Partly because I suspect that it's culturally offensive, but don't have enough knowledge to be sure. This is a book that I know for sure I bought at a book fair in elementary school. I think we had learned something about Coco Pelli, and I liked the story and the sound of the name, so the book caught my eye. And then I never read it. I feel like I ought to have gotten rid of it a long time ago, but for some reason I kept it around. I suspect this is largely because I got it at a book fair. When faced with an army of books that look interesting and given a limited number to choose, even 20-some years on, I feel like I ought to make it count. I needed a book under 250 pages for the 2024 challenge, and this is one of very few physical books I own that meet the criteria that I haven't read. Now I've read it and can happily get rid of it. Assuming it isn't wildly offensive, it's not a terrible book. Tep doesn't really do much as a protagonist, primarily reacting to events as they happen. A fair chunk of this book is just him trying to deal with turning into a pack rat every night and losing control of himself to his animal instincts. What I think it does do well, particularly for a young kid, is discuss the topic of agriculture and seed propagation in a way that feels both approachable and interesting. Tep lives on a seed farm where his father grows a wide variety of crops that need very little water so that he can propagate and distribute the seeds to people that need that kind of plant. His job is twofold. First, he's helping people in dry climates get enough food, and second, he's attempting to keep a wide variety of crops from going extinct. The book weaves this pretty well into what is otherwise a fairly tame fantasy adventure. Tep's mother, on the other hand, is studying rat nests. Because the pack rats that live in the area tend to pick up a wide variety of objects from their surroundings and store them in unpleasant but useful ways, she can pick apart these nests and, using carbon dating, get a picture of the types of plants and cultures that existed around the area over a long period of time. Both of these seem like very important endeavors that I've never given a single thought to. I could see how a kid reading it might get excited about the idea and how that could shape the direction of their life positively. However, this book does use Native American culture as its inspirations, theoretically from the Anasazi people, but I wouldn't pretend to know if Hobbes got that specific. Again, I'm not educated enough to know how well researched or respectfully these beliefs are portrayed, but I do know that Hobbes is not Native himself and merely has a fascination with them from growing up around cliff dwellings in the Colorado area. If I had never seen this book before, I wouldn't have purchased it now, but as an indicator of how little I was educated in the concept of cultural appropriation, my school's mascot at the time was the Indians. Though they did change it when I was in fifth grade. <sighs> Approach this book with some caution, is my point. It has some very good and valuable lessons in it, but it may have some very bad ones as well. Anyway, that's all I have to say about Coco Pelli's Flute. If you liked this video, I hope you'll watch more in the future. Thanks for watching this one. Bye!